This is so exciting to be here. Uh, it is a world-renowned amethyst mine, and the specimens that they pull out of the open pit mine behind me are really something to be seen. They have deep, rich, saturated purple color. They have great clarity as well, so we're really excited. I'm here with a couple members of the Gem Squad. We're gonna have, some, uh, have a chance to dig around. Now, what you're seeing behind me, this is actually the pit. That What looks like a lake, that's actually where they do most of the mining. That is the open pit mine. All these kind of hills that you're seeing around it, the built up almost cliffs, are actually the material that they've pulled out of that pit. So these are the mine tailings is what we call it. That's a great place to look through uh, and see if we can find any amethyst amidst all this rubble. It's everywhere and we keep refreshing. Every year there's, there's stuff coming out of the mine. Okay. And they will take some of the big stuff and put it in their personal collections for sale. And, the rest of it gets put out here, and, and the quality of the stuff that you find in the really tailing piles, size. this is tailing piles. Really? This wow. came out of the tailings. That's amazing. So anybody can find this. I mean, majority of it has clarity, but there's some of it, it depends on if it's alluvial or if it comes out of the boulders <laughs> or not. Okay, it's so nice so the stuff coming alluvially is going to have better clarity? It's a little clarity? more rough. It's, Interesting. It's, yeah, it's a little more rough and it's a little it's a little less clarity. Thank you. Whereas the stuff that comes out of the boulders mm -hmm. are protected ah. and, and stuff comes out of the mud. We have uh, clay pockets that uh -huh. come out in these huge clay pockets mm -hmm. that we find inside boulders and they have the crystals that are have the clarity, they're protected. I want you guys to see that there's a variety of color in terms of saturation that comes out of the mine from this beautiful, almost Rose de France color, all the way to like a really super saturated. Yeah, let's take a look at both of these because that is really, truly those magenta and blue flashes. That's what Jackson's Crossing Ameth Crossroads Amethyst is all about, right? Well, known That's for it. Known yes. for it. And because that is so special to this area, really nice specimens and really beautiful um, faceted stones can go for thousands of dollars. Two five carats. Two five carats, 21 hours cut it. to cut a stone like this. And I mean, you can see that all that attention to detail really paid off. The way that he has positioned the color zoning in the stone so that it almost disappears is just amazing. It may look kind of sandy to you. That's because a lot of it is going to be broken down quartz. Quartz being one of the most prevalent minerals on the planet Earth. And quartz is mainly made of silica. Amethyst, of course, is a purple variety of quartz, and the way that we get amethyst is that um, there has to be iron present. So if you've ever seen Georgia clay, that nice red color, that's the, a good indication that there's iron in the soil. As long as you have iron in the soil and a little bit of natural radiation in the ground itself, what happens there is that the radiation causes the iron to punch a color center in the middle of the quartz, making it that vibrant purple color. Amethyst can form in a number of different materials. It can form in basalt, uh, like it does in Brazil. It can form in rhyolite, like it does in Mexico. It can also form in granite, or in this case, there is a material that covers this area. The geochemistry of this area is something called metadactite. So dactite, another mineral, uh, meta means that it metamorphizes. it's a metamorphic rock. So either the amethyst is growing in the metadactite or it's growing in the layer below it, which is made of granite. That's my guess. Now, how do we get amethyst out of granite? Well, this particular kind of granite, the one that we see in a mine, is called 
rotten granite. And that makes sense, right? It's all crumbly and that's how we're able to break it apart so easily to pull out the amethyst geodes, amethyst crystals, We had to get out of the car to see the wildlife. Well, I'm here with my new friends, Paul and Kendrick, and they're gonna show us what they found. But how long have you guys been out here mining today? Maybe about two or three hours. Two or three hours? Since it opened. Since it opened about at 9 a.m. Yep. You're a trooper, that's awesome. Okay, so first, I wanna show you what Kendrick found. And we've got, what we've got here is um, very, very typical of what you find here at Jackson's Crossroads. We've got a, a big expanse, a matrix full of small quartz crystals. Each one of them is just so typical. It forms that perfect six-sided pyramidal termination point. Really, really beautiful. And looks like it's mixed in with some granite there. So I think we were right about the rotten granite theory. Um, looks absolutely beautiful. I think that one's gonna make a nice mineral specimen. You could probably sell that and make some money. You gonna keep it? Yeah, I won't keep it. You gotta keep it. I like to hear that. That's awesome. Okay, and Paul, first, I wanted to see this piece of, um, of matrix that you found. And this is also very typical of Jackson's Crossroads. Oh, okay, so right here, see this druzy? See how it glints and sparkles in the sun? That's exactly what um, makes Jackson's Crossroad amethyst that is attached to its matrix go for top dollar because it's got that glittery druzy underneath. And then you also found a whole bunch of quartz crystals, yeah, right? Yeah, like smoky <laughs> quartz points and uh, some... <laughs> They call them pale if they're not really um, mm. high quality color. But I really so. like, okay, so the one you've got, that smoky that you've got there, you wanna hold it up for the camera. That has got really good smoky quartz color and it's the perfect um, pyramidal termination point. So you can really tell right away that that's quartz. And this was my first smoky that I found. We've been doing it for about six months. Really? Yep. That's fantastic. And, uh, and then this one, can you hold that one up for us? The one with that. It's got some beautiful color zoning, and that's very typical of amethyst, that it will be, there'll be a purple streak or purple zone in um, an otherwise rock crystal or smoky quartz crystal. So I think you've got a nice example of how that color, you know, we always talk about on my show, that quartz doesn't grow in a vacuum. Amethyst doesn't just grow by itself, it's usually mixed with other types of quartz. Right. That's so cool. Now, um, you told me, how did you, how did you find all this? Uh, top of the ground. It rained recently, so you walk around and there's a, a few points that are sticking out and shining, and you know, just look down. So it's really it's work smarter, not harder. Right. I like that. And then one of them you said you found in a rock that looked like what? The rock had a kind of like a cave in it. Yeah. And the cave was surrounded by um, very tiny crystals. And in the middle of all of those crystals, kind of like in the mouth of the cave, was this piece that she found. What you guys found is actually pretty special because what you found is a geode, a geode that had been cracked open. And if you hold that sample up one more time, mm -hmm. um, this is special because you've got a double termination point. It looks like it's starting to doubly terminate. And then it looks like they're actually twins. So I'm not sure, Shane, how close you can get on this one. But right here, is that line. In fact, let me just try and put this in my hand. I'm gonna hand you yes. back your specimen. There we go, thank you. And what you see here, so first of all, here is a cleavage line between those two quartz crystals. And right down here at the bottom, you've got an itty bitty sidecar, an itty bitty extra quartz crystal, and that one's rock crystal quartz. Leave a right. What? Leave it right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is our director Shane, and we're having so much fun today. We decided it was time to turn even our director loose to have some fun. Go ahead, Shane. Give it a try. That's a 16-pound sledgehammer, and he is going to attempt to break a little piece of this rock. Ready? Yep. Go! Wow! Nicely done. One more for, one more for luck. One more for luck. How did it feel? Like swinging a 16 pound sledgehammer. Like swinging a 16 pound sledgehammer. <laughs> 
Nice. Let the head do all the work, but yeah. What'd you find? I guess this is the... Leverite? Leverite, yeah. As Susan put it, we're just gonna leave her right there. I'm pretty sure that we're right about this rotten granite theory. The more that I look at the rocks around here, the more I'm pretty sure that rocks like this are just gonna easily break apart. And when you look inside, see, it really does look like granite material here. And I think that, you know, look, I can crumble this in my hand. So rotten granite, it's granite that has become um, structurally unsound due to that natural radiation in the earth. That's how we're able to break the rocks here apart and find any veins of quartz or amethyst that are running through them. We're at an amethyst mine and I actually found a piece of amethyst. Look how cool it is. It's got like a point here and a point here and a point here and here. I'm here with my friend Cliff, and Cliff, have, you've been mining on and off for five years, right? Yeah, yeah five years. Ago. How did you uh, get involved with mining? I basically uh, did Native American artifacts. Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, you, while you were buying, trailing, trading, selling, and finding that stuff, you probably saw a lot of mineral specimens. Yeah, would always find a bunch of quartz. Sure would always, ah. and, you know, um, uh, some crystals, in fact, even some beads, but. So it kind of led into that, and being from this area, you know, this mine's an hour and ten minutes from my house. Oh, okay. And there's two other ones that's, you know, less than an hour away. So. And that's Graves Mountain. Yeah, Graves Mountain. And what else? And uh, Diamond Hill Mine. That's Diamond Hill Mine, I like yeah. that one too. Yeah. All, th all three of them are that close, so I just started doing it, and then I started coming during the operational part of the mine, being when it's when, when they're working it. Oh, cool. So then I got to see that aspect of it too, as well. So. How many people work and are involved in doing a machine dig? Uh, three people's fun, five people can do it. Okay. They usually have six or seven folks with oh, that's great. somebody sitting around doing nothing. That's really the, the, the time when they're pulling out a lot of stuff, right? Because yeah. they're using the bulldozer to, to, to pull Check more it. out of the pit mm -hmm. and turn over the earth, right? Right. Pop, go into the new dirt, pop, and it's got to, it's that easy. He has to go that slow and okay. methodical. And you know, it's, I imagine there's some crystal breakage using the. Uh, it can be, yeah. Okay. Quartz stuff is, you know, and you still got facet grade, but there goes the specimen. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what they're after. And and, and that's making. that's what's uh, okay. That's what I was going to ask you. So why is the amethyst from Jackson's Crossroads um, on Matrix particularly attractive to collectors? Is it the druzy or what is it's it? It's the uniqueness of not having a vein system and everything growing in granite. This okay. Is a, this is a big old hunk of granite. Right. And everything is inside solid granite. So Interesting. For it to be, and so druzy is on every piece. If you look at some of the top end pieces or go into the museum and see some, every piece is on druzy and got some, mm. you know, they, they've already trimmed all the all the granite off, but you can still see some small little crystals, little, little flowers, and little cuties on there too, along with you know bigger crystals. And that's very unique, I think, to Jackson's Crossroads. I know your amethyst from Mexico forms in rhyolite. The stuff in Brazil forms in granite too, but I don't think I don't know if it has that same crumbly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like Brazilian stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty. Yeah, it is. It really but is. this is special, and it's American. Yeah. You know, and that's a big deal for it's our collectors. Fairly new find. I mean, you know, it's only been like, not, not you know 35 years. Sounds like a lot, a long time to some people, but not me. Well, not geologically either. So exactly. it probably means Thank there's a you. lot more down there to be found. Do you think? Oh, I, I'm, they're going straight down there. Oh, it's warm. Sorry, everyone. I'm glistening. <laughs> but it is warm, and it's it's a little bit humid as well. And um, that's what I wanted to show our viewers at home okay. is that it's hard work. You know, it's not like you just walk around and it's lying there on the floor. Right. And oh, it's, it's, it's definitely hard work because it's inside that granite. Usually, yeah. there's people out here slinging sledgehammers for yeah. eight hours, and this wow. one guy's got a 16 pounder that works the devil out of it. When you split open a granite boulder, mm -hmm. is it like a geode where there's a cavity inside? Very much so, yes. Okay. It's like a geode. And, and, 
um, when he's peeling it back with the machine, that's what it's like peeling a giant onion, if you could picture it. Oh, wow. Layers, layers of granite come back. And we'll see we'll see that peanut butter, pocket mud, and okay. the greasy, and open up and be no gel. And then yeah, the next layer, barely got barely got any juice and all kind of peanut butter. I mean, all kind of jellies. Interesting. <laughs> That's amazing. So jelly is like top clarity, yeah, top color. It, it, it looks juice. like grape it jelly. Does. I want to go find a piece like Susan's. That's just incredible. What I love about this is you've actually got one, two, three, four, four crystals. And at least one of them is doubly terminated. No, two of them are doubly terminated. Really nice zoning with the amethyst because it sort of spreads evenly over the stone. What do you think about this? I love it, a little flower. Now, yeah, if you, yeah. I heard you bargaining with yeah, Susan I earlier. I always, when I see somebody with a nice piece, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, I, 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 cause I'm learning. I mean, yeah. I've only been doing this four years, so. Well, what would you value yeah, a part, piece this like this? It's 50 bucks. 50 bucks, really? Yeah. Wow. Like why? Why? Why is it worth 50 First bucks? First of all, it's Jackson Cooper. Second That's of all, right. you got you got no damage. Okay. That's to the termination to point. Any, to okay. No, so no damage. Even then, when the machine is going to get beat up. That's true. And then it being you know three different crystals. That's amazing. That's the only contact spot. Yeah. Wow, beautiful specimen, Susan, good work. Paul and his fiance, Ashley, have been really busy and she found this incredible specimen. This is exactly what people are collecting from Jackson's Crossroads, these big pieces of quartz in matrix. And you'll see right down here, you've got perfectly terminated little quartz crystals, great clarity, great um, colorless specimens and, and there are even more here that you can't see yet because he hasn't cleaned it up. Right. Um, so you'll go home and you'll probably, what, use a, a fingernail brush to clean this off? I Maybe a little acid? I will go home and not think about rocks <laughs> for about three days and I'll let my fiance do all the cleaning. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great big specimen. How much do you think that weighs? Uh, it's about 30 pounds. Oh wow. About 30 pounds. Now you got to go cart it out to the car. Here at JTV, we make our hosts work hard for the money. <laughs> in the secret, in the secret JTV mines. <laughs> so incredible! The things that we've seen in the people that we've met here today at Jackson's Crossroads. It has been a memorable trip. We mined for amethyst for about five to five and a half hours. I think we, when you look at the pieces that we found today, it really gives you an appreciation for the jewelry pipeline. The fact that even here, in a place where, quite frankly, amethyst is prevalent, we mined all day long, all three of us, and didn't really find anything that would be good enough, saturated enough, clean enough, or big enough mm -hmm. to become a piece of jewelry. So when you think about our prices at JTV for our loose gemstones or for our, our um, pieces set in jewelry, our amethyst sure is affordable when it's taken in the context of all the hard work that it takes to mine, right? Yes, yes absolutely. Did you show them what you found? I did. Susan this is had amazing. the find of the day. But this is like a specimen. Yeah. I mean, this you could cut this, and you wouldn't want to cut this into jewelry because see, it's got three. It's one of them has a double terminated point. I mean, it's really cool. It has a little baby. It's actually it. four. Yeah. It's really cool. But that's just like a little specimen, and that was fun to find. But if you think about it, if you're mining to make jewelry. I would probably have had so much fun because I would have wanted to find a lot more than just this one piece. You're absolutely right. And something that's more saturated too. And that was the struggle is trying to find something purple. You found that you were going a little crazy thinking you were seeing something purple. And it was actually quartz. And we found a lot of actual pieces that had a lot of growth. Um, but again, pieces that are more um, specifically for display, not for jewelry. Mm -hmm. And so again, when we look at our JTV prices and we look at how saturated the stones are that we're selling and that we're selling them at such a low price point, I have such a respect for the miners and how long it took for them to find that piece and then to fasten it and then to set it into a piece of jewelry. The process of going through all of that to bring it to you to show on our television show I'm glad I sit where I do. Yeah. <laughs> Gives you a lot of respect, doesn't yes. it? Yes. We all have sunburns. And we found a lot of Leverite.